Hey everyone, Hercule Wait here, and welcome back to the channel where I discuss a day in the life of IT. And this channel just focuses on everything that goes on in the life of an IT person. So dealing with scripts, uh, AD, uh, Mac OS, users, whatever, videos, all types of things. Uh, so right now I am in the process of rebranding the channel. So I do have two videos up. I talk about pretty much how to use PowerShell to your advantage. In one case, creating a bootable USB drive directly from ISO, no third party tools needed. Uh, in the other one, I'll talk about how to configure the Dell BIOS, again, directly in PowerShell. And you can do this before Windows is fully installed, or you can do this within Windows. So if you haven't checked out those videos, please check them out there. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm glad to have you here. Um, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that bell button as well to be notified about new videos that I drop. I try to release videos weekly, uh, but as you may know, being in the IT field, you can get very, very busy. All right, so this video is going to be about moving away from deep freeze, right? I get asked that a lot. And if you use deep freeze and you're happy with it, no kudos to you my hat goes off to you however for me it, it it becomes a hassle especially when you have to install programs when you have to update programs you need to change a gpo uh, you need to add a printer things like that you have to thaw and then refreeze and you know you don't want to forget to leave that one particular file there or else it's going to stay there forever it, it just became too much of a hassle so it was up to us to figure out, well, how can we move away from defreeze? Well, we can do that by one, using PowerShell and also taking advantage of GPOs, which I'm going to um, go into both here. All right, so these are one of our GPOs that we do here. Um, it pretty much just says, um, it's pretty much a GPO that cleans up the computer after a user logs off. So in our labs, in our environment, we force users to restart the computer, whether it's an icon on the computer, or if you click on start, the only option you're gonna get is reboot. And that's so these scripts that you see in front of you can actually run. And you can see that this is uh, running uh, under the computer contacts here, and it's running at the uh, startup, all right? So these, again, these are all PowerShell scripts here that I'm gonna go over one by one, uh, but it is, important that these are done in this order here and we're again we're going to each one here here is the scripts that they have and i do have them in the order that they are ran. um one commenter from a previous video of mine mentioned that i zoom in uh, so if this looks good to you especially on a mobile device let me know if i need to zoom in a little bit more then let me know uh, but pretty much what this does is it gets rid of everything that's on the C drive or on that root drive, right? Now we do leave, um, obviously we do have an exclusion list and that is here in this text file here that is on every computer at this path. I handle that through a GPO uh, preference or GP preference, I should say, a group policy preference. Um, and you know, if it's not in here, it's gonna get deleted, all right? Now it is important that if some of your applications require a folder to be on the root drive, obviously add it here, all right? And that's one of the things about moving away from deep freeze. You do have to do a little bit of legwork first to actually get up and running. But once you actually do that, then you can go ahead and move forward, all right? So pretty much what I'm doing here is I'm just looking for everything uh, all, all the folders here. And if that folder is not in that exception here, uh, which we gather from here, and I guess I could have done this a little bit differently. I uh, probably could have just got the concept and um, went, went from there. All right. Now this script, I kind of co-wrote this script with somebody else who isn't as strong as in PowerShell. Uh, so, I mean, obviously if you just use the Git content, it will have automatically created a, an array. Uh, but this particular person decided to use the for each object to uh, store it in an array. Right. All right. So what we want to do here again, we're going to go through each folder that is on that root drive, which is the C drive. And we're going to remove that folder and everything within that folder. 
all right and you can see that this person does use the wit of which is a good practice uh, you want to use the wit of to actually test and see what the actual folder is going to do uh, lines 19 and 20 was something that I had to add uh, because in um, a couple of labs that we have I had to deploy uh, an unreal engine and they use this thing called vault cache, which doesn't get deleted, unfortunately, on, on the reboot. So I have to actually uh, do that myself. So if that path does is this, I just go ahead and remove it. All right. Uh, I have that in multiple labs. So uh, there was no there was no point in me um, pretty much specifying if it should be done on a specific computers. I just went ahead and done it at the global level for all of our labs because if I had to deploy Unreal Engine to another lab, oh, well, the script will already be ran. And you know, this is a quick check here. And it's not like it take a lot of processing anyways. This is a quick check here. If this returns false, then you know, this line, line 20 is not going to be ran anyways, all right? And that's pretty much what I do there. So uh, definitely important that you want to keep track of what's actually um, being put into your root folder um, because you, I mean, you, you never know what may happen. All right, but it's good for us to just clean it up. All right, so this script here is to pretty much clean up the temporary folder and also to run a disk cleanup tool. All right, now to properly use this cleanup tool, uh, we do have to set some registry keys, which I do handle through GPOs, but just in case it doesn't get handled through GPOs, um, I do have a batch file that I can run, which pretty much just adds all of these files and uh, with these flags here uh, to the registry. So when that cleanup tool does run on that particular computer, everything will be taken care of. All right. So again, real simple script. Again, a NOR 6 through 7, uh, but I'm just removing the temporary folder and also um, running the disk cleanup tool. All right, so this is probably the most important part of the actual uh, cleanup process and that's removing the user profile. All right, and we do use BG Info on all of our computers and we do put, hey, once you reboot, this is going to remove your um, user profile. So don't save anything. So we do have network drives. We do ha use Google Drive and we stress that. Uh, but if you do save local, I mean, it's, you know, too bad, so sad. All right. So, I mean, this is pretty much self-explanatory. Obviously, if, if you're familiar with Windows, you know you don't just want to delete the actual folder. You want to delete the profile as well. And that's what this script does. I'm not going to go too much into detail, uh, but you can see here that it's trying to get all the profiles here. And it's doing that using the um, Win32 user profile class. Uh, we're, we're doing again just everything to, to look for to see what we can delete um we're, we're checking the last login uh we're getting the unused days uh, which for us we're going to use zero because there's there's no need to say well if it haven't been used in seven days delete it no as soon as you reboot it's gonna it's gonna go ahead and remove it all right and you know this this doesn't write to anything i guess i should write it to something to check but in, in my testing, this always works because it's doing it at the start of the at the start of the machine. Um, but again, again, you can clearly see that um, stuff is being deleted, and you know it's. I've never seen the error uh, for it to delete. Now you can you see here if the uh, profile is loaded, it's not going to delete, and that's obviously true. And again, that's the reason why we do this at the beginning of the computer before before the login screen is even brought up so once that computer boots into windows boom it's running the script and it's deleting now normally there should only be one profile to delete if the script works as it should i have seen it where sometimes a profile doesn't get deleted and that's okay uh but after the you know second or third um reboot and startup then normally all the other profiles will get deleted. 
All right. So that is this script here. And this script will be in the um, in the description. So if you're interested in deleting your profiles, you can go ahead and do that. I did pull those off the Internet. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Amano Galano, uh, dev, dev admin .it. I believe this is he is from Italy. This is not just IT as an information technology but he is from Italy, uh, so there may be some translation you have to do. Uh, but the script works. And, you know, we use this uh, particular um, parameter, set of parameters here. All users name and force. Don't, don't ask me anything. Just go ahead and do it. All right. And then the last thing I do is I, for, I do a trim. All right. So a trim is pretty much like defragging. But all of our lab computers are SSDs. So it's pretty much like defragging, but for SSDs. I haven't really seen too much of a performance, but it does help. The last script that I that I have that again I, I don't have up here is to clean up the recycle bin. Unfortunately, I know that the um recycle bin is a user level thing so i actually have to do that at log off uh, so when a user logs off of a computer i have to go ahead and clean that up and i just do that in the user profile again blind to the user they don't know anything about it nine times out of ten they're not really deleting much they're just leaving it on the desktop but again i want to make sure that there's nothing left that can be traced back to the user especially students all right so let's move into another key component about moving away from deep freeze. All right. So one of the key benefits about deep freeze is that um, you don't have to worry about malicious stuff being ran because it's going to get deleted anyways. Right. And that's cool and dandy. Now, it was our intention to make sure that we still give some sort of usability for the students and for a user in that particular matter, but we still have to set some restrictions. So things like torrent, uh, log me in, team viewer, we want to go ahead and restrict that. Well, how can we restrict that? Well, we use something called software restrictions, as you can see here. This is built into um, GPOs and it's under the uh, policies, window settings, security settings, and then we use additional rules and path rules. Uh, we do have some uh, policies as well. I'm not gonna really get into that. Uh, but, and again, you can see the path here that it's again, it goes to computer, policy, windows, security, software restrictions, and additional rules. So what this pretty much does is, this is an allow list for ESCs to run, all right? Now, I will say that when we first implemented this, took about an hour or two to run through each and every software that we have and add it to this list. And I will admit that is part of the legwork that I was referring to in the beginning that you have to put that work in. But, you know, once you do it one time, you normally don't have to do it anymore. And we'll, I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, but again, as you can see here, this is pretty much an allow list for all of these programs to run. Now, the other good thing is this is a a disallow list, right? So anything that has the word turn in it, team viewer, log me in, Dropbox, Deluge, all of that will get disabled, all right? It, it will be prevent from running and it will be logged as well. So if a student tried to, to run uTorrent, not only will he won't be able to run it, but I can go back, check the logs that he doesn't have access to or she that they don't have access to. And I can say, hey, this student tried to run uTorrent at this particular time at this particular on this particular computer. And again, the, the proof is in the pudding. And I, I have had some instances where, you know, certain students say, hey, I can't run this particular program. And I say, what program are you trying to run? And then they say, never mind. And then I go back, check the logs, and I see, oh, they're trying to run uh, some team view or log me in to have their friends remote into the computer, all right? Which obviously we, we don't want to allow because these should be for the students that's part of our actual college, not someone else from a different college or from a different university, whatever. Uh, but again, you can see here that 
most of the programs that we run here is I run at the folder level. The reason that we do it at the folder level is because we just want to make sure that um, all our bases is covered. So for example, uh, let me see here, ANSYS, right? I just updated ANSYS to uh, 2022. Uh, so ANSYS will use the C program files, ANSYS Inc folder, and then they have, you know, version 19.3 or maybe 2.11 or 2.22, which pretty much um, pretty much states the version. But if I just leave this here, then this GPO is allow anything at the at the root and below this folder to run. So you know if they have fluent or if they have structures they need to run or electronics whatever, then they can go ahead and run that. Uh, so that's again that, that's pretty cool there and it again it allows you to have a little bit more flexibility so when it comes time to upgrade a particular app you don't have to go in and add this uh, the only only reason why you will have to go into this gpo is if you're installing a new application and you need to allow it all right so again this is pre pretty nifty here and it saved us a lot of work down the line and i can easily go ahead and upgrade apps remove apps you know this that and the third and it works just fine all right and it doesn't slow down the computer at login or anything like that all right so that my friends is how you would pretty much if you wanted to move away from deep freeze that's how you would do it all right if you like this video give a thumbs up if you didn't like it, go ahead and give me a thumbs down, uh, but subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification. I got more videos coming on the way. I am working on trying to get my green screen up. I just got to figure out the lighting and how to get that operational. So if you have any tips on that, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Um, but that's all that I have. You guys been great and I'll see you in the next video.